anti-Asian, anti-Muslim, anti-Black violence research project involves our review of how these different types of violence intersect. We were blessed with an amazing opportunity to join the Interfaith Youth Corps, who contacted me about doing research, listening sessions, and education for the purposes of looking at anti-Asian, anti-Black, and anti-Muslim violence. And because of our reputation and background as an institution that convenes, uh, we were the perfect uh, fit for IFYC to be able to engage in this kind of project. My name is Janan Mahajer. I'm with the Interfaith Youth Corps. As we were coming into a part of the pandemic where we were beginning to reopen, we were also hearing and paying attention to the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes that was happening you know, across the country in response to the pandemic. And the Asian American Foundation reached out to us and offered to be in partnership with us to think about you know, how do we elevate voices of Asian Americans, um, specifically of the religious diversity and experience of, of Asian Americans, as a way to push back on the rise in hate. So that's how this opportunity came about. CTS is based in our home city, it's based in Chicago. So it seemed like a natural space for us to reach out and to ask, you know, how, is, there, is there a way for us to partner on this together? Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren and sisters can gather together in unity. Uh, I wanted to actually practice what we preach as an institution. We selected individuals based upon the three ethnic groups that were identified uh, as target communities. The primary focus was Asian because they were dealing with the rise in Asian violence. But of course, we knew that there were synergies with other communities, uh, especially in the Muslim and black communities uh, in the United States. My name is Hewon Sophia Hyun. I'm the associate pastor at the First United Methodist Church at the Chicago Temple. I totally agree with Garam and August. Yeah, I've been seeing lack of solidarity among Asian groups, Asian women or Asian you know, group in general. I was um, expecting to learn more about other groups' experiences. I'm, I'm Asian, I'm experience, experiencing all the Asian stuff, but I'm not Black and I'm not Muslim, so I don't know, I didn't know anything about their experiences. So that was my expectation about the conversation. So for this project, we met on Zoom this time. It was uh, help us to get engaged wherever we are. My name is Munir Sheikh. I'm Vice President of Academic Affairs and Operations at Bayan Islamic Graduate School, which is a partner of the Chicago Theological Seminary. When this project came to my attention and we were looking to find uh, suitable conversation partners, I was able to take a look at our uh, roster of students. Our students hail from around the country and they represent different ethnic backgrounds. And I wanted to make sure that we could bring together a diverse group just within the Muslim uh, participants. I reached out to a number of our students and even some alumni to see if they might have interest in having this conversation about their experiences in terms of uh, racism and prejudice. Fortunately, a number of them had some very particular stories to share in the conversation, and so uh, it, it was enriching and challenging to hear what they had to share and, uh, and try to incorporate that into the broader conversation that we were having with the other groups as well. I am at the intersectionality of every every group, like, you know, gender, minority, religion, like you name it. And it's it's realizing that how messed up it is. Not until I realize it for myself, now I understand how others have been going through. Here at CTS, um, this kind of convening allows us to become cultural workers. It allows the institution to be involved in fundamentally creating a different kind of society. Right? Because all the issues that we're talking about, if they are to be addressed in any kind of real way, it requires fundamental changes to society. And that means creating a different kind of, of culture, a different kind of sensibility. We have to change what people care about, what we invest in. And this kind of convening allows the seminary to be a part of that process. We realized 
this is not just our issues, but we all experience this time of fear and ah, frustrations and pains, right? That we should continue this discussion and we should continue to get engaged with each other, to understand better uh, and to build a, you know, uh, the network and solidarity. You can step in and help or you can preach about this at your pulpit in your church and you can teach students in your school and you can talk about it with your friends or family. Every moment can be a teaching moment. Having a vision that builds up these pockets of conversation and relationship and power and then then connecting them across each other is also one way to think about what's, what's going to happen next. I am not interested in talking about the problems without identifying solutions and moving forward with concrete actions to address those challenges that we've identified. So I'm hoping that we can build scholarship, that we can build uh, additional opportunities for listening sessions. I know that some of the uh, participants have expressed a desire to continue to meet and to build coalitions instead of identifying with factions.